Hey there guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd do a bit of a comparison between the Intel slot cooler, the Noctua NHD14 and also the Hyper 212X just to show you how much difference there is between the standard cooler and a mid-range and high-end aftermarket cooler. Here we have the Intel slot cooler on the Core i5-6500 with an average temperature of 27 degrees on idle. Of course, most coolers will perform similarly because the system isn't really doing anything. This isn't a bad temperature. So I've just been exporting a 10 minute video to try and stress out the cooler. And as we can see over here, uh, temperatures seem to be at between 60 and 68 on average, with the hottest core going fairly hot there, above 70 degrees, 72. Funnily enough, the third core seems to be the coolest and the second core is the hottest, so I don't quite understand that. So here we have City Skylines, which is, generally speaking, a CPU intensive game. The average temperature has been as high as 62, not at the moment, and this core here has been as high as 68. So not really a concern, but not the best either. So we just installed the Hyper 212X, with only one fan of course, because my motherboard doesn't have an extra fan header anyway. And the idle temperatures, 26 degrees, as long as it focuses, there we go. And that's pretty consistent, which is pretty awesome. So I'm back here again rendering a video, it's just about finished, if it can focus, there we go. And the temperatures are really amazing compared to the stock cooler. It's hovered between uh, 45 and 50 degrees, that's the first time I saw a 51. So that is quite a large decrease in temperature. Pretty impressive. So here we are in city skylines again. And uh, as we can see over on this side, the temperatures are an average of about 45. Sometimes they go a little bit higher, sometimes they go a little bit lower, but that's uh, quite good. I thought they might be actually a little bit lower because I know how hot it goes when it's rendering, but I suppose this is a pretty CPU intensive game, so this is to be expected. So we've installed the Noctua NH-D14 gigantic CPU cooler, and like, I don't know if you know anything about clearance, but there's a little bit there. We're doing idle temperatures at the moment, and they're sitting around 26, 27 degrees, which is pretty amazing. But most CPU coolers will be able to do really well when nothing's actually happening. It's the next test that really matters. Here I am back again. Exporting the exact same video, 9 minutes and 25 seconds long. And you can see over here that the temperature is between 40 and 45 degrees on average. And the hottest core goes up to about 51. So a very good performance here. Much, much better than the stock cooler. So here we are in city skylines and I'm following a bus around. In less demanding areas, the temperatures go as low as 37 degrees. But they can go as high as 42 degrees sometimes, which is a very good performance to say the least. I should point out that although I couldn't measure ambient temperatures, the weather forecast said it was about 35 degrees, so just a typical Australian day. So which one do I recommend that you pick up? Well, it depends really. If you don't really mind about really hot temperatures and possibly shorter lifespan on your CPU, then maybe consider not upgrading. Also, if you don't live in a climate as harsh as Australia, then you can also consider it. But if you do care, and you do live in some hot place, then an upgrade is fairly inexpensive. I picked up the Cooler Master Hyper 212X for about $45 used on eBay. I also picked up the Noctua NH-D14 used for about $75 on eBay. Considering that at stock fan settings at least, there's only about 5 degrees between the Hyper 212X and the NH-D14. I might recommend the, the Cooler Master Hyper 212X. But of course, if you're thinking about it as an investment standpoint, and thinking about upgrading to an overclocked processor later on, then maybe go with the D14. It has a nicer sound, although maybe it doesn't look quite as nice. From a price to performance standpoint, the Cooler Master Hyper 212X seems like the obvious choice between the two. From an aesthetics point of view, the Hyper 212X, I suppose, might look a little bit nicer, especially considering that they don't, you know, use the same color scheme. I would say that I prefer the acoustics of the Noctua NH-D14, 
It's got a nice hum to it, unlike the Intel stock cooler, of course. I suppose it comes down to how much you're willing to spend and on what your RAM selection is. With my standard stick of value RAM, it fit in uh, nicely with some space extra. But if you have really tall dims, then maybe look somewhere else. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Um, I know I don't do that much tech stuff, but I do get into it quite a bit. And I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'll see you in the next one.